Well, it's really nice outside today, very mild weather, and I'm out here in part to work some more on my caveman club, because I intend to use this for trying some peasant staff techniques in Paulus Hector Meyer's manual, but uh, more importantly, just to be out to get some exercise, you know, burn calories and stuff, because, well, I need it. As people sometimes feel the need to point out in the comment section, I'm overweight. Why they feel the need to point that out is beyond me, because it's not like I, I would go, you know, I would look at that comment and go, holy shit, you're right, I can finally see it, oh crap, I am fat, I have a belly, oh wow, wow, why did I never notice that before? Yeah, that's obviously not how it goes, I'm well aware of the fact that I am and have been overweight for my entire life. I've never been skinny, ever. I mean, I came pretty close to it once, but never been really skinny or, you know, optimal weight or whatever you want to call it. And um, there are reasons for it. If, you know, it's not lack of interest, it's not lack of motivation or anything. And that's the other thing that really pisses me off when you know people sometimes seem to think that fat shaming somebody will make them lose weight if you go like oh you're such a fat ass go to the gym that's gonna do something right no if you believe that that's gonna help somebody get in shape you're an idiot quite frankly sorry but that's the truth it's stupid and it also makes you a douchebag. The thing is, I've tried a lot of things, a lot of different diets, and of course, the good old eat less, exercise more, which works, don't get me wrong, it does. But um, the thing is, as difficult as losing weight is or can be for some people, it's even more difficult to keep the weight off. And if you're subscribed to Cutlery Lover, you know about that because he was in the exact same situation. Exact same thing. He got you know, really skinny and fit and everything. And then the weight came back on. And the exact same happened to me. I was very familiar with what he said because that's exactly how it goes. Especially also this, you know, even as you're starting to realize, oh, I'm putting weight back on, you just go, ah. You know, I, I lost the weight in the first place. It's not gonna be difficult. I'll, I'll get rid of it again and uh, we'll we get it done. And um, yeah, then you just, you know, start to kind of deceive yourself. And then eventually at some point you just realize, oh, fuck me, I got fat again. And I think I said this exact same sentence in another video when I talked about this, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, the problem with that is if you go on a diet, you also go off a diet. And even if you if you do a lifestyle change, you know, and th that's what I did when I did, um, you know, succeeded at becoming almost skinny. It was a lifestyle change. It was not just a temporary diet. However, gradually the lifestyle changed again. That's the problem with that. And. Um, it's quite often triggered by external factors. And I don't mean this as, as an excuse, like, oh, well, it was not my fault, this and that happened. Um, it's, of course, easy to fall for that. But really, the thing is, if, if your, um, your lifestyle depends on certain external factors, like your work, for instance, like some people have uh, physical labor jobs, for instance, and they're, you know, nice and, you know, slim and fit and everything. And then they, they get, whatever, an office job or something, some, some kind of job that involves a lot of sitting, and they get fat. And that kind of thing, that's exactly the problem. If anything changes, for, for example, like recently, I, I put on five kilos because of the knee injury. Well, knee and wrist injury. That was really the main problem. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't walk. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't lift weights because, you know, the wrist was fucked up. There was really, you know, just not sitting around, according to the doctors. Don't do anything, just rest, which, as it turned out, was wrong. The physiotherapist knew better. You know, after a while, it would have been better to actually stop.
start easing into things, but hey, whatever. That's a problem, and that's the kind of external factor. But the thing is, you cannot change these things, you know? These external factors, they, they just happen to you. You cannot do really anything about it. If you, if you suddenly have an accident, okay, you can, you can try to avoid accidents, but when it happens, it happens, and there's not too much you can do about it. You can only try to speed up the recovery and stuff. So, you, can, uh, you cannot control the external factors, but you can control your own response to them. You know, ideally, my response would have been, okay, I'll have to sit around for a while, I'll have to eat less and, you know, more veggies and, and whatever. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. I suppose it's kind of a lack of, of awareness where, you know, sometimes you just, you just get up, you go into the kitchen and, and you grab something and uh, by the time you realize what you're doing, like, oh shit, why, why am I eating something? You've already stuffed it into your mouth. Yeah. Sounds like just a case of uh, weak will. And yeah, willpower does have to do with it to an extent, there's no denying that. There is this voice of reason in my head that goes, no, why, what are you doing? Stop this. It's, you know, sugar bomb, whatever, don't do it. You're gonna get fatter. But, you know, the, the wild animal inside just goes, fuck you, I want this now. And the voice of reason just, no, no, don't crush me. And then it's dead. So, <laughs> yeah, sounds amusing, but really isn't. And, um, yeah, so what, what am I trying to say here? Well, you have to basically trick yourself a little bit. You know, if, if your brain sometimes tricks you into doing things that you really shouldn't, if, you know, even if you don't really want to, you kind of have to return the favor and trick it a little bit. Um, for example, apparently according to psychological studies, you can recondition yourself to start liking other kinds of food. Uh, if you're you know, really fond of chocolate or whatever, uh, start you know, substituting fruit right? and, and you know some people will tell you that eating fruit is not really good either because fructose and you know calories here and there uh, carbs in particular um, and yes compared to vegetables fruit is not really that good however obviously fruit beats candy right so um, you can use that as a substitute and uh, you know kind of teach yourself to like it you know when you when you're sitting there eating first of all find something that you already kind of like um, and then you know just try to so associate positive things with it like as you're eating uh, grapes for example or an apple or whatever um, do something pleasant meanwhile like it may sound stupid but look at kitty pictures or something some positive stimulus or, you know, <laughs> I almost said get a blow drop while eating fruit. Um, well, <laughs> I guess that would be a, a way to go about it. But just, you know, link it with something pleasant and uh, try to trick yourself into, into thinking, uh -huh, flashy. Try to trick yourself into thinking, oh, this is really delicious. Um, just, just saying it in your mind, you know, oh, I really like this. Even if, if, you know, maybe you're not enjoying it quite as much, but, you know, try to tell yourself, hey, this tastes almost as good as chocolate. It's nice and sweet, you know, savor the fleet, the, the fleet's waver, <laughs> the sweet flavor. And maybe try to associate the bad stuff with uh, bad stimuli. Um, <laughs> if you're really hardcore, you can try to eat chocolate while giving yourself electroshocks, I suppose. Wouldn't necessarily <laughs> recommend that, but, Whatever, um, while eating chocolate, look at naked fat pictures of yourself and go like, oh, damn it, that's disgusting. <laughs> something. I'm just you know, kind of brainstorming here. But come up with, or try to come up with some things to make you like the bad things less and uh, the healthy things more. Easier said than done, I know. I know that very well, but that's a way of, of doing it. And otherwise, as far as exercise is concerned. I'm not a fan of this suck it up mentality. Like, well, this kind of exercise is not fun. Well, suck it up, do it anyway, you fat, lazy fuck. That's, that's not really good. Well, maybe for some people it works, but the problem is 
it's not just that it's, it's gonna annoy you, but the main, pro well, actually it kind of is because that means you're gonna be less likely to keep it up long-term because people are not really as good at willpower as they like to think, you know, humans in general. Um, there has been psychological study. I remember one study, for example, um, which involved, well, children, granted, children have less willpower than adults by default, but it still shows the mechanism behind it. Namely, they were presented with a piece of candy, one piece, and uh, told the researchers gonna come back in 15 minutes, and if they can wait until then, they're gonna get a second piece of candy. And they left, left that in the room and, you know, went out. And, um, no, as you may ex expect, a lot of the children just, uh, you know, maybe some lasted like 30 seconds or something, some maybe a little longer, but eventually they just popped the candy in their mouth and ate it because they couldn't, they couldn't resist the temptation anymore. Uh, but some did manage to wait until the researcher came back. And uh, what they found out was not that the ones that could wait have higher willpower, but that they're using tricks, so to speak, you know, mental uh, techniques to deal with that. Namely, they simply distracted themselves. Like they, they started to, you know, look around in the, in the room, uh, find something that interested them, or maybe come up with improvised games. Uh, some uh, untied and retied their shoelaces over and over again. Just, in other words, they just uh, kept occupying themselves. And uh, that's what made them, you know, be able to resist the temptation. Just do not think about it. Do something else. And this is also one of the reasons why I do this. Because as I'm working on this, I'm focusing on this. I don't care about food right now. Um, even if I start getting hungry, I may, you know, uh, notice that as a bodily thing. <laughs> I may notice, okay, there's hunger, but I don't really give a damn. Because right now I'm, I'm occupied with something. Just like I used to, when I, when I did flint napping, for example, I used to uh, just do that for hours and hours, and I didn't really do anything. I didn't uh, didn't drink or eat. Yeah, speaking of which, drinking. I should. That's something that it's good to to keep in mind because if you get dehydrated, that's of course not good. And personally, I. I have a hard time drinking enough, but it's good to remind yourself of that and do that occasionally. But, you know, at least you don't, don't care about food while doing something. Or at least that's the case for me. Whereas sitting around makes me hungry, oddly enough. I don't know why that is, but... The other thing is finding something that is actually enjoyable. You know, if it interests you, some kind of exercise that, that you get some fun out of. And it may take a while, it may take a couple of attempts to find something that you do enjoy. Um, but, you know, there's probably something, you know. I, I'm willing to bet that everybody has some kind of exercise that they can get some enjoyment out of. And that's really an important thing. Again, psychological concept, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation means you're doing something for, you know, some external reason. For example, a student who's studying to get a good grade. And intrinsic motivation means you're doing something because you generally enjoy it. You want to do it, you like it. Um, so a student who's studying because they are genuinely enjoying gathering more knowledge, you know, that kind of thing. And yes, I know I gesture a lot with a knife, but don't worry, it's all away from me. Um, so in that case, if you find an exercise that has intrinsic motivation, like meaning it gives like the, the thing itself, the activity itself gives you enjoyment, you're much more likely to keep that up. Whereas if you do it for, you know, external reason, e e extrinsic motivation, like I work out because I want to get slim, it's a noble goal, it's, it's definitely motivation, but it may be a lot easier if you have something that you really enjoy, just for its own sake. Um, in my case, you know, something like this, I definitely do enjoy. And uh, the other thing is uh, HEMA, you know, Historical European Martial Arts sort practice. I generally do enjoy that. I like to... Like, I can, I can go for several hours trying to, you know, figure out techniques and stuff, because that just interests me. I just don't have enough people here, but that's going to change as soon as we move to Victoria. Victoria, British Columbia, by the way, not Australia. Um, so, that's good. If you, find, if you can find something, you know, um, team sports, a lot of people like that. It doesn't have to be team sport, it can be whatever, squash, you know. 
um, racquetball, whatever. Taking a walk, you know, something as simple as that, you know, hiking. You know, taking a walk at the beach if you have one nearby or, you know, on the mountains or in the forest or uh, whatever. Take long walks with your dog or, you know, something. Find something that gets you moving, that uh, prevents you from eating. Oh, but, but by the way, one thing. The, the typical mistake that people often make when trying to lose weight is just stop eating. No, please don't. I, I've done that myself, you know, during, um, let's see, when I was in my teenage years, like, you know, 16, 17, around that, I, I did that mistake. I didn't eat breakfast and um, I didn't take anything with me to eat for, uh, in school. And uh, everybody was always amazed, like, wow, you, you never eat anything. Like, how, how could you be overweight? But um, yeah, that, that is the thing. Because if you, if you get up and then you don't eat anything and you go for hours and hours and then you eat like for first, like whatever, at around three or four, first time in the day that you actually eat something, that's very, very bad because you're, you send your, your body into starvation mode, basically. It goes on, holy shit, emergency and um, metabolism slows down. Of course, you're gonna have less energy to do things as well. Um, and I understand that some people don't like to eat breakfast. Some people just, um, when they get up, they, the food is la the, the last thought on their mind. I'm the opposite. When I, when I wake up, I'm ravenous. I'm ridiculously hungry, so that's not a problem. But other people, they wake up and they have no interest in food. But I would really highly, highly recommend that you force yourself to eat something. Oh, well, my memory card was full, so I had to delete some stuff, which um, shows me that I've been talking for too long. <laughs> but um, yeah, I figured maybe some of you would enjoy this, this kind of rambling without any political vitriol this time. You know, just um, rambling about some things in life, because I know that some people like that, that type of video. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're among those, you're, you're probably also among those who made it through this video because otherwise who would watch that long if you have no interest, right? So uh, if you're still with me, thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna continue a little bit more with this. And uh, yeah, that's really all I have. <laughs> the video is way too long anyway, I bet. So let's leave it at that. So have a good day guys and uh, try to avoid angry cavemen with clubs and don't call them fat. Brrr.